next talk, which is from uh, Sebastian Stamler from the University Observatory in uh, Munich. He's a postdoc there and he's going to present this Pi, which is a Python package for dust evolution in a protoplanetary disk. So, Sebastian, you can share your slide and go ahead. Uh, I, I will turn on my camera uh, when you have two minutes left. Sorry. Okay, great. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm talking about another dust coagulation code um, now. Um, ours is a little bit uh, different uh, to what you've heard before. Um, and it's written in Python and it's all um, up on the um, Python package index where you can easily um, download it. Um, as a little bit of um, a motivation, why, why does um, dust size actually matter? Um, there are different reasons. I just list a few of uh, them here. Um, like an important one is uh, radiative properties of dust particles. They depend on the on the size of the dust particle or on the relation between uh, size of dust particle and wavelength you're observing. Um, grain surface chemistry depends on dust particle sizes. Um, given the same mass, um, smaller dust particles have a larger um, surface um, and can um, have a large impact to grain surface chemistry. But also aerodynamic properties in the disk depend um, highly on um, the sizes of the dust particles, um, like dust accretion in the disk. Um, larger particles have a um, higher drift speed. Um, for planetesimal formation, if you are thinking of something like streaming instability, which um, depends on the dust particle size. And um, in the context of exoplanets, maybe most um, uh, important is uh, pebble accretion, um, where the size of um, Accretion onto a planetary core de um, depends on the on the particle size, and um, you may know um, this very famous plot of um, Karl and Uberg showing the um, C to O ratio in gas and dust, um, depending on between which um, ice lines you are in the disk. And um, if you then see um, at the uh, at the dust um, 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 uh, C O O ratio. And if you then assume, okay, um, the, the particle, uh, yet your planetary core is somewhere here in the disk, this is the available C2O ratio in the dust, but then you still need to know how much of this dust is secreted onto your planet, and this depends highly on particle size. There's a um, really nice review by Chris Ormel where he shows um, like um, different particle sizes and different uh, disk um, conditions have different accretion rates. Um, on, for example, here on this right plot, on the x-axis, is the particle radius, on the y-axis, is the radius of, the, of your planetary core. And um, uh, blue means the um, accretion rate is enhanced over the geometrical cross-section, and red means it's reduced. And you see really there's a high variation in particle size. So if you want to really model what is the chemical content that got accreted onto your, onto your planet, you need to know what is the particle size. Um, so, how do you how do how do we do this? So the naive approach would be okay. We just um, set a few particles in SPH code or something like that, and track every um, dust particle and see how how it's going to happen. Um, but th this is a bit problematic. Um, I always like to do this little numerical example here. Um, if you think um, only of Earth, Earth has ten to the twenty seven gram. Now, um, if we want to produce Earth out of um, interstellar medium dust particles, which has have 10 to the minus uh, 13 gram. That means only to produce one Earth, we need uh, 10 to the 40 ISM particles. Um, okay, we put this in a simulation um, and we store six parameters for each particle, which is three um, coordinates, the three velocities, and we store them as a double precision floating number, um, which means per parameter we have eight bytes. Um, that means we need to, to, in the RAM, just to, for one Earth, like 10 to the 30 terabyte, and uh, then we only have one Earth. Uh, we don't have the other planets. We don't have the mass that got accreted or ejected. And um, yeah, to put this in another uh, perspective, this is like uh, 10 to the 27 NASA supercomputers. So um, it's like just not possible. There are different um, solutions now um, for this problem. Um, one is uh, you use a Monte Carlo method. Um, where you then um, just combine several of the dust particles into representative particles and you only track those, which is then uh, feasible. Or um, instead of individual particles, you will look at a particle mass distribution. And that's what we are doing in DustPy. We are solving the Smolokovsky equation. And the Smolokovsky equation is basically the holy grail of um, dust evolution. And um, it looks a bit uh, complicated like that. But um, I just want to quickly show how, how it works. So um, we have. Uh, distribution n of m 
of dust, particle, dust particles of a certain size. We have a computer, so we don't have continuous distributions. We have mass spins. We have to split it. So this is the um, mass grid where our simulation lives on. Smaller mass spins are here. Larger mass spins are here. And um, this double integral is now just summing all possible collisions that you can have between your mass spins. And if I just, as an example, now look at one single um, uh, particle collision, let's say we have these um, two particles colliding with each other. So we are now here in the equation where we just have the densities of these two particles. Um, they collide with a certain collision rate, which is this R here. And um, then you need to know what is the outcome of, of this particle collision. And this is either from um, simulations or from um, experiments. Um, and let's assume in a simple case, um, they um, hit and stick and form a larger particle. Um, so then we um, do not necessarily end up on our mass grid itself, but in between two mass spins, then we just distribute uh, our mass between these two mass spins. And this is um, in K, uh, hidden in this K. Um, and uh, this negative term that you have on the on the right side here, this is just you have to remove these particles that collided because they are not there in the um, distribution anymore. Um, and yeah, all the physics is basically hidden in these K and R. And uh, the good thing is now with DustPy, you don't have to deal about that. Um, everything is doing it for you in the background. And what DustPy is doing for you, it's solving this equation in every grid cell. Um, and then additionally has um, dust transport in the disk and um, gas transport. Um, to show how a, a typical simulation uh, looks like that. So dust pi is a, a 1D code. That means we have one uh, dimension, the distance from the star. And here on the y-axis is the particle size. And color coded is then just the density of a certain particle size at a certain location in your disk. And now you know exactly what particles you have um, that can be accreted on your exoplanet. Um, you see that the particles initially um, grow very rapidly in the inner disk, just because time scales are shorter in the inner disk. Um, additionally, you see two lines here. One is the blue line, which is the so-called fragmentation barrier. So if the particles reach a certain size, their relative velocity gets um, large enough, so they exceed their individual fragmentation velocity, and therefore they fragment instead of um, grow further. Um, this is the blue line, and the green line is the so-called drift limit where um, particles just um, drift more rapidly um, towards the star than they can, can grow upwards. Um, and just to show a, a quick demonstration how, how you would do this in, in DustPy, um, it's very simple. Uh, so the, you just import from DustPy this main simulation class, and um, then you create an object from this class, and basically the entire simulation then lives in this um, object. Um, now that you have the time to um, yeah, customize your model, um, but if you don't want to do that, you just do this uh, sim.initialize, and what DustPy is doing there is just everything that you have not customized on your own will be replaced by a, um, by a standard function in the DustPy library. So in this case, we have not customized anything. That means if we do this uh, initialize, we just initialize the standard model of DustPy, and then we do um, run, and uh, this is then something that you get here on the, on the right hand side. So very easy to use. Um, but now let's say we want to customize it. Um, there has been this idea that the fragmentation velocity that I mentioned depends on the particle composition. Um, so let's say you have um, icy particles. So ice is a, um, a polar molecule. So you have these polar forces. So the idea is ice particles are more sticky than pure silicate particles. And uh, so let's say, okay, we are outside of the water ice line, then we want to have a larger fragmentation velocity. And uh, how would you do that? Um, so first of all, we need to create an, our own function that uh, um, uh, returns the fragmentation velocity. Um, this is here vfrag, and it needs as an argument our simulation object uh, itself. That means within the simulation, uh, within the function, we can reference everything in the simulation object. Then we utilize the from NumPy, the where function, the first argument of the wear function is just a condition. Now we want to say, okay, wherever the temperature is smaller than 150 Kelvin, then we are outside of the water ice line. Then we want to have a fragmentation velocity of 10 meters per second, so CGS units here. Um, or if this condition is not fulfilled, we are here, then we want one meter per second. And uh, within DustPy, you can easily just um, address all the attributes just by, by um, going to the, the group that you want and then the field. So like the sim.gas.t. 
Now we have this function that returns the um, fragmentation velocity. Now we just have to tell DustPy to use this one instead of the standard function. And how we, uh, we do this um, like here. So um, after the initialization step here, we just go to the field where the fragmentation velocity is stored. And this has an attribute, the updater. And we just now load our defined function into, um, into this updater. And now DustPy knows, okay, from now on, I use this function uh, to calculate fragmentation velocity instead of the standard function. And um, if we run this, then we get uh, a model like, uh, like you see here on the right side. Um, you see this jump in fragmentation velocity um, here um, indicated by the um, fragmentation barrier, where outside of the water ice line, you have larger particles because they are, are more sticky um, than, than inside. So it was like now seven lines of code that you had to add and you have an entirely um, new model. So that's the philosoph philosophy of DustPy that everything is super easy um, to modify. Um, I quickly want to show, give me a brief overview of science that we have done so far um, uh, with DustPy. Um, in, in one project, we um, simulated um, planetesimal formation in, in a pressure bump. And uh, planetesimal formation just means we added a recipe that was um, when a certain condition is fulfilled, um, we remove dust and put them in planetesimals. And uh, with that, we could, for example, um, explain the peculiar optical thickness in uh, the rings um, that are um, observed in disks. Um, in another project, um, we used it in moving pressure bumps, so we could have wide planetesimal rings, um, which could be interesting for um, uh, exo Kuiper belts, for example. In a very recent paper, um, uh, Tommy was um, combining DustPy with an um, n-body code, uh, so the planetesimals that we formed were directly used in an n-body code, and we could form um, a planetary course really, really quickly. And in the most recent one, we uh, investigated how leaky actually these um, pressure bumps are. So in, in this model, we have uh, a Saturn mass planet at 5 AU, and we only initialize dust in the outer disk. Uh, and if we run, run this now, um, the particles are not really trapped efficiently. So what's happening here is that um, particles, the large particles are trapped, but in the pressure bump, they are fragmentation limited we fragment down to smaller particles and the small particles can diffuse inwards. So we could um, contaminate, chemi chemically contaminate the inner disk without the disk material, despite there being a planet. Um, I want to quickly um, mention another thing, and this is SynFrame, because this is what I just showed you, um, that you can just add uh, functions to, to fields is actually not uh, intrinsic to DustPy, it's um, just um, intrinsic to SynFrame. So it's another project that we made where you can use like data structures you can just uh, define your differential equations automatically integrated by SimFrame. You don't have to deal about input and output. Um, it's done for you. And um, it's very versatile. Like um, here is an, like an n-body code of uh, simulation of the solar system, where we then can just give us mock observations that you could use, for example, in a lab course where the students could try to um, get the solar system planets out or like mechanical problems like a coupled oscillator or a double pendulum, um, which is a chaotic system or even here, um, a modeling of a pandemic, in this case, um, COVID-19. And all these cases are in, in the documentation, very easy to implement, and um, you can just um, have a look there. So I'll just um, keep up here my summary slide with uh, resources where you can get these codes, um, documentation, and uh, how to install them. If there are any questions, just write me a message on Slack or on email. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. 